these conferences are all about you. It's about you and you're wanting to learn about multicultural. That's why these things are still going 20 years later. It's about you. And, and, and what's happened with multicultural marketing is we're still trying to figure it out. You know, Nancy's kind of my counterpart. Um, she kind of stands alone there in Milwaukee as one of the leaders in multicultural marketing. And one of the things that we, she's going to talk to us today about is how her company has worked with the Bucks and the Brewers and really turn them into fanaticos. So ladies and gentlemen, how about a warm welcome for Nancy Hernandez. I love the fact that our agency has pro sports teams as, as clients, because it kind of hits home for me. It's, you know, I, I actually drag my husband to a lot of sports games um, throughout the year, and he has fun chatting and drinking beer, and I'm like, let me watch the game. This is something that we know is true, right? Hispanics love sports, and you're gonna hear that over and over again today. But as a marketer, somebody who lives and, and dies by what's going on with the, mar with, with the population, the audience that we're talking to, it never ceases to amaze me how true this statement is and how really um, it sets the platform for a wonderful opportunity in pro, in pro sports. There are 37 million Hispanics who identify themselves as sports fans. The other part is 34% are those die-hard fans. That's, that's fan avidity. Those are the folks that buy your merchandise, a lot of it. Most importantly, they organize other folks to go to the game with them, like I'm one of those people. I don't buy two season tickets, I buy eight season tickets because I want to go with a bunch of people that also want to see the games. Hispanics, on the average, follow four and a half different sports, while general market, on the average, only follows three, right? So if you combine these three numbers, that means that there, this is a kind of a trifecta, and there's a lot of positive things going on. There's a really good platform. All teams in, the M, uh, in Major League Baseball will go with a full translated name, um, and that is something that has worked for them. And that goes back probably at least 15 years from when the first few teams did it. So the Brewers actually use Cerveceros, and one day a year they, have, they will do a Cerveceros day where they actually play on field with the Cerveceros logo, and they, the visiting team will also use their names in Spanish as well. So the Brewers, or Cerveceros, would play the Gigantes, and both of them will be on field with those jerseys. My name is Maya Santa Maria, and I am the owner of Santa Maria Broadcasting, as well as Midwest Latino Entertainment and Talent. I am here at the Latino Marketing Conference, which has a focus in sports this year. And the reason that I am participating is that we have uh, the best marketing um, opportunities for the general market to be able to market to Latinos here in the Twin Cities with La Raza radio station and Telemundo Minnesota television station. What's important here for us locally in Minnesota is finding a way of bridging the gap between the fanaticism that there is for soccer in Latin America and teams in Mexico, for example, that are so extremely popular here in Minnesota with the Latino community and finding a way to bridge that over to uh, finding a fanaticism for our local hometown team and our Minnesota team United. Hello, I'm Tony Sane. I'm CEO of the Sane Foundation. I'm here today at the Hispanic Marketing Conference to help promote and uh, show support for the Latino community and the diversity in the Twin Cities. At the Sane Foundation, our mission is to empower kids, improve lives, and unite diverse communities. I'm super excited about the new soccer venue coming uh, in the middle of St. Paul. Obviously, I was raised in St. Paul. Um, I think it's going to do so much for the light rail, for the community, for economic development, but it's also going to do a lot for the people. I think there's a lot of people that support soccer, but really didn't feel that they had that flagship enterprise professional home. And now, all the soccer fans feel like first-class citizens, and I think they're going to celebrate and come together, and it's going to be awesome. As we, as we mentioned before, uh, the Sano Foundation, and, and again, um, Tony uh, deciding to, uh, to return here to his roots, to St. Paul, and, and, and uh, 
and do something for the youth, and we need that. Uh, you, as, as well documented, we're struggling here with achievement gaps. Uh, we're struggling here with uh, a lot of uh, high school dropouts. And uh, Tony, fill us in. Um, yeah, so my, my history through, through, through the sport um, really let me know how the sports and the community can leverage relationships and, and different uh, communities, especially communities of color. Um, so when I retired, I wanted to use the sport, but not for the sport itself, but for the outcomes that it gave me, and that's leadership and um, being a part of the community. So we developed the SANA Foundation, and uh, I think in, I retired in 2010. Since then, the program's it's grown from three people to, to 50 full-time staff, and we're serving over 10,000 kids in the Twin Cities, and uh, we're, we're in the public schools, and we have an initiative to have free summer camps for 10,000 kids this summer. So. If you know kids um, that need our services or a community that needs our services, please reach out. And the positive news we had, we were up at the Capitol as well, and we did get a $1.5 million direct appropriation to expand our programming into Minneapolis and St. Cloud, and we also got put into a, a grant as, as well. So uh, we did pretty well. Well, they did you right there. Congratulations, Tony. Um, Miguel, I know that uh, you just returned recently to New York City. They had the... Uh, baseball League Multicultural Marketing um, Conference. How did that meeting turn out? Uh, what, what, what did you experience, and what's kind of the future of multicultural marketing in the league? It was a great meeting. It was a good opportunity to learn about uh, what the league is committed and what the league, the league, the whole league is doing regarding marketing. It's a good opportunity to learn from other teams about the programs, outreach, commitment, and also was a good opportunity to see that I can't complain too much because we're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the wonderful news I, th I think that we learned from the commissioner was that they're going to open office in Mexico. Uh, MLB is going to open office in Mexico because we want to strengthen our relation with, with Mexico and everything that we do regarding multicultural marketing. This needs to come from the top to the bottom, not the bottom, to the top, because it's going to be more harder. And uh, so we are very happy for everything that we hear there. The twin was the first one to, re to realize that they're not doing right, uh, the, the process to outreach uh, communities and minority communities, because they, they did many nights, Latino nights, African-American nights. I don't know how many nights, you know. <laughs> you know. We, we had Norwegian nights. We have a lot, a lot gained to do so many nights. but. But when you see the outcome of those nights, you see uh, people buy 50 ticket total, you know, uh, our part of those outreach and, and the tank uh, or investment and money investment was a lot. The Latino kids play soccer and, and uh, particularly they actually, because of the explosion of the game in, in terms of the uh, social media, in terms of uh, TV, uh, the kids now can watch more soccer than uh, anybody probably in the whole world. Hi, my name is Manny Lagos. I'm the sporting director for Minnesota United FC. That's the local professional soccer team here. We in no way, shape or form uh, want the public to, to fund the stadium. We want to make sure because we believe so much in what's going on and where we're going. The stadium is going to be private, entirely privately funded, which is uh, really amazing and, and again surreal for me as, as a soccer guy and, and my own myopic view of, of the sport and the growth of it. I grew up in St. Paul. Uh, so that's where I hail from. I lived here until 1990, went to high school at St. Paul Academy, uh, went to college in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and then I moved away for about 15 years and played uh, professional soccer, to enjoying uh, the challenge and, and the excitement of the growth of soccer in this uh, community. If you take the Hispanics in this country, it will be the 12th largest economy in the world. So wouldn't you be marketing to the 12th largest economy in the world if you're a marketer, right? So it's also the, the size of the population in terms of percentage, right? It's 17%, but it matters, right? $1.2 trillion in purchasing power. I'm pretty sure as a marketer, you want a slice of that. But also there's misconceptions, right? A lot of people think they tend to be poor, they're the immigrants. But you know what? One in four Hispanic households make over $75,000, right? So that is very consistent with the mean household income in this country. If you pick any industry, you know, paper today or magazine, what are they talking about? How do we win with millennials? How do we get millennials to come to our ballpark or to our arena, et cetera? 
Well, to me then, if you're trying to figure out how to win with millennials, that means you're trying to figure out how to win with Hispanics because Hispanics represent 20% of the millennial population in this country. As a brand, right, if you're not talking to the Latina who's actually very, very involved in the decision-making process, including the season ticket purchases, um, then you're missing a big opportunity, right? The other thing that I like is the fact that a lot of times they talk about um, you know, the growth of the segments and how they're, you know, the trajectory. Look at this trajectory. The Latinas are expected to represent 30% of the entire female population in this country by 2060, while the white female population is going to decrease 43%. Right? Those are very significant stats when we talk about it's not just important today, you have to plant the seed today so you can get the benefits down the future. Biculturals, they're Hispanic with the heart, they're American with the mind, right? We talked about that, the passion, but the, the logical, when you start making decisions, you, you think about it, you're more thoughtful, which are qualities more so often associated with Americans, right? So that's what it means to be bicultural, right? Um, so 87% of Latinas that are bicultural want to stay bicultural. Right? A lot of people always have this belief that's going to be assimilation, right? I mean, I've heard Soledad O'Brien speak, and she says, man, when we moved, right, think about it, we're Cuban, half white, half African American. In the 70s, my parents said, just blend in. That's all, that was the, that was the lesson. Please blend in. Like, and so that's what they learn. And people say, okay, that's what's going to happen to everybody else. No, when there's 55 million strong, you don't have to blend in anymore. We have the CEO here, Carlos De Leon, is currently CEO of Night Lab USA de la Riva, USA based in Miami. When the Mexican national team comes and plays in the United States, uh, I, I, I really recommend that you go to one of these matches. It's like getting a diploma on marketing and activations and, and how to do it really well. It's, it's a pretty good benchmark to any major league soccer. Uh, team, uh, Mexican, the Mexican national team, to give you an idea, they don't play any more friendly matches in Mexico because the business is so big in the U.S. that all of their friendly matches are happening in the U.S. And they pre-sell, they're literally like rock stars. It's like you too. They, they so the, the stadiums are sold out in every single venue they go to. So really go to one of them. Go two, maybe three hours before, and it's a pretty, pretty good way to experience what uh, brands that are doing things right with Hispanics are, are doing around uh, soccer. When we interview uh, first-generation Hispanics, um, not in a sports study, but in, in any study, uh, about 70% of, of the times they tell us that one of the first things they do when they come here in order to integrate to their new city, town, or whatever it is, uh, it's go to a soccer match. Uh, that's when when they get to know uh, how it is to, to, to live in the United States. It's a, it's a source for integration in, in the very first time. When you go to the soccer stadium, you stop thinking for 90 minutes about where you come from or, 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 or uh, conflicts, sources of conflicts. When you do research with Hispanics, you tend to hear a lot of negative things uh, about being Hispanic in the U.S. When you go to a soccer stadium, it's as if they forget about all of those problems for 90 minutes, and uh, they become they become one. Second generation uh, Hispanics are already consuming uh, media uh, in, in in English language, most of them what it's called English uh, preferred uh, segments. But when it comes to soccer, they'd rather look at, 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 at soccer in Spanish because they tend to uh, recognize that, that the commentators in, in, in soccer are much more entertaining than when you watch soccer <laughs> in English. It's like, w it's like looking at a different, uh, entirely different match. We're here because we feel that there is that now is the perfect time for uh, the general market to reach out to the Latino community, specifically when it uh, pertains to entertainment and sports. Uh, we know now that by 2020, 30% of the population is going to be Latino, and it's a 
growing segment of the marketplace. And if you miss that part of the marketplace, you're going to be missing the mark. Tony, uh, this, this is your award here. It's the Hispanic Marketing Achievement Award. And in recognition of your outstanding leadership in the development of Hispanic marketing industry in the United States. And uh, we are very, very grateful to have you here with us, Tony. Thank you. Who are the people who made it possible for you to be where you are today? Uh, take some time and write their names down, because I've done that. Uh, this allowed me to do that. Uh, because think about how many times they had to hit the barriers and hit the walls before there was an opening. And then you came around. You know, it might be a, a friend, a boss, someone who you respect. Um, today, you probably don't even see a wall. No bashing, no crashing, no ceiling. And this is where responsibility comes in. Because you have the responsibility to them not only to continue the path, but to improve it, to elevate it, and to disrupt it. Figure out what you can do to continue the story and provoke action. What would make them proud? and what would make you proud. And this is what leadership comes in. This is what leadership is, in my opinion. We've leveraged sports uh, very effectively over the years to uh, connect uh, experientially with, with Hispanics uh, and, and other consumer groups, really. You know, they say that a measure of, award, of an award is, um, is the company it keeps, and I know that you've awarded this to uh, some other icons in the industry, and um, I'm very honored uh, to be receiving this award today, and honored to be um, mentioned in the same breath of some of the people that have, uh, have been awarded it before. So again, thank you. I, I was really happy about the idea of giving an award to research, because to, to your point, uh, Rick, we talk about marketing. We always talk about the end product, the advertising, the, the, product, the product that is on the shelf or whatever. But we don't give too much importance to all the work that comes before that. And especially for the multicultural industry, I think that's very important. Honda was the first automaker uh, to talk directly to the Latino market in 1990. First ones to go in, into the market. And there was a notion at the time that Latinos didn't buy new cars. They only bought used cars. Why would we want to target them directly? So Honda was the one that broke the mold and went into, into the market. And uh, within a year of, of uh, addressing Latinos directly, they went from number six and number eight in their top two models to number one and two. So that disproved the notion of Latinos not buying new cars right away. What brings you to Minnesota? Well, uh, the beautiful Twin Cities is, uh, is the conference, is uh, you know, the, the, the marketing conference uh, today, which is now celebrating its 20th anniversary, so congratulations. We're talking about a sport now that has more millennials watching it than any other sport. So again, the, the timing of, of, of this type of investment, combined with now integrating that investment with the, uh, the business opportunities and marketing opportunities, it, again, it, it makes me so excited to come and talk at these talks because we're at, a, at a, a, a very positive, exciting point uh, for our sport, both from a, a competitive side, to become more globally competitive on the field, and definitely as a business side off the field. And we always look forward to being part of these uh, conferences. So congratulations to Rick and his team, and also a uh, big thank you to everyone who participated in this conference. We're proud sponsors, La Raza en Telemundo, Minnesota, of the Hispanic Marketing Conference, and we hope to see you at the next Hispanic Marketing Conference. Adios.